Dune Prophecy is only a few months away from releasing on Max, and after getting some solid looks at the first spin-off in Denis Villeneuve's science fiction saga, we can only wonder whether it can live up to the quality of that big screen adaptation. Now yes, it is very much its own thing and is separated largely within the Dune timeline, but it has been labelled as a project within the adaptation universe that Denis has put to screen, and from what we've seen, it has took some visual cues from it too. So in this video essay, I'm going to be discussing whether Dune Prophecy can live up to the greatness of the movies and deliver a show that while being its own thing, continues this current Dune saga well. Before I get into it though, if you want to keep up to date on any of my content surrounding Dune Prophecy, Messiah, and beyond, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating and subscribing to the channel. But without further ado, let's dive into the potential of Dune Prophecy. So for many years, Frank Herbert's novel Dune was considered unadaptable. However, we now find ourselves in an era where Denis Villeneuve's two-part adaptation of the original novel has become a sensation, earning praise from fans and critics, and the latest film being hailed as one of the very finest sci-fi entries. Now, with the upcoming Max series Dune Prophecy set to debut in November this year, the saga has another challenge. Warner Brothers and Legendary are gearing up to emulate the success of the expanding universe, and Dune Prophecy, a show that has been in the works for five years, is taking place thousands of years before the films, while remaining within that same saga. The series takes place 10,000 years prior to the birth of Paul Atreides, and will explore the origins of the Bene Gesserit, the enigmatic political group that Paul's mother, Lady Jessica, eventually becomes a part of. Operating behind the scenes, they safeguard the future from ruin by shaping crucial choices. The series will mainly focus on the Harkonnen family and the woman who established that order. While it sets so many years prior to Paul Atreides' arrival, it still features recognisable house names from the original Dune saga, such as the Atreides and the Harkonnens. Given the franchise's popularity and the increasing demand for streaming content, it makes sense for the studios to broaden the Dune universe. And with the show connected, but set in a completely different time period, and specifically on characters not featured in the films, it allows them to be bolder with creative choices and let the creators of the show make it more of their own piece too. If Prophecy finds success, this new venture into TV will enable Warner Brothers and Co. to keep crafting stories within the Dune universe beyond just the trilogy of films that Denis is crafting, capitalising on the franchise's appeal at a more manageable cost. Now, while I'm thrilled to dive back into this realm filled with intense intrigue and centuries of political power struggles, and I'll get into that later on in the video, there is also a degree of caution. First and foremost, the prequels and sequels penned by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson are often seen as a mixed blessing by many fans. This raises the intriguing question of how WB will handle adaptations within the Dune universe, particularly since Prophecy draws inspiration from Herbert and Anderson's 2012 work, Sisterhood of Dune. On a positive note though, John Spates, who was a co-writer on the new Dune films, is involved in the adaptation of Prophecy. So this suggests a commitment to maintaining quality, continuity, and integrating this segment of the Dune legacy in a way that enhances the ideas seen in the films. Still, there's the lingering concern of whether devoted fans of Herbert's original novels embrace this new series as WB hopes. However, the messier issue surrounding the show was that it's faced a few production issues over the last couple of years too. In June 2019, Warner Brothers granted a straight-to-series order for Dune Prophecy, previously known as Dune the Sisterhood. This decision was part of what Deadline described as Legendary's extensive strategy for the Dune franchise, which also encompasses games and comic book adaptations. The series was said to be set millennia before the original novel's timeline, and draws inspiration from Sisterhood of Dune while expanding on that material. And to ensure a seamless connection between the films and the TV series, director Denis Villeneuve was initially brought on board to direct the pilot, while John Spates, the writer behind Dune Part 1 and 2, was tasked to write it. 
The initial plan soon diminished as Spates stepped down from his role as showrunner that November to concentrate on writing the sequel to June. However, he did continue to serve as an executive producer. Diane Adimu John, who gained recognition as an executive producer and writer for The Haunting of Bly Manor on Netflix, took over in 2021. Then in 2022, acclaimed TV director Johan Rennick was brought in to replace Villeneuve as director. And like his movie co-writer Space, Villeneuve remained involved as an executive producer. Later that year, Emily Watson and Shirley Henderson were cast as Valia and Tula Harkonnen alongside new characters, hinting at the show being connected to the novel but not adapting it beat for beat. That's because Sisterhood of June has those primary characters portrayed as much younger. But then more issues followed. Adimu John stepped down as showrunner just a month after the initial castings, and it was revealed that Alison Shaper, a former producer from Westworld, had quietly joined the project as showrunner. The production kicked off shortly after, and the departure of Johan Rennick and Shirley Henderson led to a creative overhaul. The new showrunner then had to make significant rewrites, and this creative shift led to the hiring of a new director and the recasting of several roles. The project resumed filming in summer of 2023, the series was then officially retitled to June Prophecy, and a premiere date was set for November this year. So as you can tell, there was a lot of issues and reshuffling during the production of June Prophecy, and when hearing all of these creative changes, it does make you wonder whether they can somehow pull it off and make it work. But while there were early signs that the show might not be coming along very smoothly, we started getting an idea of the type of show we'd be getting through the release trailers. And they suggested that this take on the Sisterhood storyline has big potential. Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson created a prequel novel that takes place following the Butlerian Jihad, a colossal conflict that eradicated all computers and sentient machines. This narrative delves into the consequences of that war and the emergence of the Butlerian movement, a faction opposed to technology. At the same time, the Harkonnen family struggles to restore their former power. In the show, Emily Watson from Chernobyl portrays Valia, the elder sister of two, and is the second Reverend Mother Superior of the Bene Gesserit Order. Valia, who had joined the Sisterhood of Rozak, showcased remarkable loyalty and extraordinary abilities. Her dedication ultimately led her to become the first Mother Superior after the organization evolved into the Bene Gesserit. Valia is known for her proactive approach, favoring decisive action to significantly shape the foundation of the Sisterhood. Her impact reaches far, influencing the modern identity of the Sisterhood, including the usage of the voice that Paul Atreides learns in that original film. In the trailer, Valia reveals that they established a network across the Imperium, but warns that their power comes at a cost. And this sets the stage for exploring the consequences of their actions as the Order faces judgement for playing God. Knowing how this intertwines with Paul Atreides' journey in the main Dune films adds an extra layer of intrigue. And then there's Olivia Williams of The Crown taking on the role of Valia's sister in Tula Harkonnen. Tula is an early Harkonnen member who had infamously killed her Atreides husband Ori on their wedding night. Under Valia's influence, Tula has committed dubious acts against the Atreides family, whom she blames for their family's ruin. Tula joins forces with her sister in their quest for vengeance and to further the goals of the Bene Gesserit. And then there's also Mark Strong, who takes on the role of Emperor Javico Carino, a figure hailing from a prestigious lineage of wartime emperors. He is tasked with the immense responsibility of ruling the Imperium and maintaining order. Now, while the show is based on Sisterhood of Dune and will use story points from that book, they have made it very clear that it will be taken in its own direction too. There is more creative freedom here, so we would expect the show to expand on the Bene Gesserit and how their sisterhood was established in a slightly different way, while still bringing elements to screen from that novel. So from a storytelling perspective, there's a lot of potential to make the show feel very unique, yet one that, like the movies, covers elements from the source material well. And again, with the Sisterhood book not being the most well-received of the Dune saga, I think it's understandable that they chose this route. Whether that is down to ambition or the creative issues regarding this show is yet to be seen. 
The idea of broadening the Dune universe is undeniably captivating, and its expansive sci-fi landscape, filled with a variety of planets and cultures, offers a treasure trove of storytelling opportunities. Villeneuve took strides to enrich this world in his films, enhancing minor characters and making unique stylistic choices that reflect his vision. However, he skillfully maintained the essence of Herbert's original narrative and its core messages. The expansion of the universe took a backseat to the storytelling that has made Dune a timeless classic for many. So while the world crafted in the original Dune novel is endlessly fascinating, it ultimately serves as a backdrop to the central themes and ideas presented in the text. And again, that makes Dune Prophecy quite a weird addition. There's definitely room in the approach to craft a unique series that has its own visual language, but you're also creating new elements and expanding on story points from the material that it's based on. And that of course makes me question whether it will work or whether it will be badly executed. It's too early to tell, but one positive aspect I will say about this approach is that maybe the direction they are taking is a way of expanding Dune in a safer way. The emergence of Dune as a vast franchise across both film and television is unavoidable, but rather than just adapting all the novels, they might see it as more beneficial to create an original expansion that stays true to the saga's fundamental themes. This is particularly relevant given the unconventional paths explored in Herbert's later books and the varying quality of the spin-off novels. So I think that the talented new creatives involved have the potential to craft a narrative that truly warrants the existence of this show. At the beginning of the series, the Bene Gesserit are not yet the formidable power depicted in Denis Villeneuve's films, and instead, we're going to witness the early development of their order. Audiences will be able to observe how these influential women embark on their journey towards the Golden Path, with events of prophecy setting the stage for Paul's transformation into the Kwisatched Haderach. If executed well, this could not only serve as a significant addition to the Dune saga, but also stand out as a remarkable achievement on its own. Frank Herbert crafted an enthralling universe brimming with possibilities, one that doesn't have to revolve around Paul Atreides. And in contrast to other well-known prequels of the day, such as House of the Dragon from the Game of Thrones franchise, Dune Prophecy remains unconfined. Set centuries prior to Paul's existence, it sidesteps the pressure of aligning plot details, allowing it to weave its own narrative within the Imperium, but one that still affects the future. I think it has a lot of potential to succeed, and even after all the troubles that the show has faced during its production, I think it looks like a project that can expand on the Dune universe in a big way. But that was my video discussing whether Dune Prophecy might live up to expectations. I will be doing more videos during the build up to the show, including any new footage or updates from the upcoming series. But are you excited for Dune Prophecy? What have you thought about what we've seen thus far? And do you think it can live up to the quality of Denis Villeneuve's adaptation on the big screen? Let me know down below in the comments section. For much more videos and news on Denis Villeneuve's Dune Universe, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.